Hey everybody, this is Joshua Kenny Greenwood. I'm the senior pastor and the overseer here at the Empowerment Center Church, churchfreedom.org. And I'm also the author of this book called The Corporation Soul, Freeing America's Pulpits from the Restrictive 501c3 Laws for Churches. It's available right now at Amazon.com at corporationsoulbook.com. Again, it's called CorporationSoulBook.com. Today we have a very important question from a pastor, which is from uh, a pastor out in uh, Illinois, and he asked, um, do you need to have a, ch a physical church building, i.e. four walls and a steeple, in order to have a corporation soul? Uh, that's actually a very, very good question. Uh, the very, very short answer to that question, without getting into extreme detail like the book does, uh, is is uh, is the short answer is yes, absolutely. Okay, because first off, you have to, you have to have an understanding of what a church is. In fact, Black's Law Dictionary, I think it's like the fifth or sixth edition, describes a church as, in its most general sense, it is uh, the religious society of believers, the propagators of Jesus Christ's doctrines and ordinances. So if you are a Christian, you are literally, by definition, the church. In fact, the word church wasn't even used in human syntax and or even in recorded history prior to Jesus making mention to it uh, in the book of Matthew. So you need to understand that you can't separate a church. A, a building isn't the church. A, 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 the people inside are what makes the church. So what that means is, is if you have a ministry like ours here at the Empowerment Center, where you do uh, minister to uh, uh, people all over the web, or you might do conference calls or webinars or whatever, okay, we consider that. We, we have to ask the question, what's the difference between doing that in front of like a live audience where right now I'm, I may be preaching to thousands of people that end up watching a video, what's the difference between that and a pastor that's in a building doing the exact same thing with people? People that are there in a building. There's no difference, none whatsoever. Uh, technology has completely revolutionized the way that people conduct church. Okay, so if you don't have four square walls and a steeple, but you have a ministry like an outreach ministry, uh, or, or you have a, a, an, an evangelistic type of ministry where you're at home, okay, but you're a Christian and your life, and you do have an assignment that's on your life, and your life is is reflective uh, of of First Timothy chapter three uh, verses one through thirteen. Okay, that's that's our that's the standard that we hold of leaders that should have a corporation soul here. Um, and then uh, if, if it is, then absolutely you can use as a Christian that church establishment affidavit as long as you have people that are, are uh, you know, you have members uh, to your church. They're willing to sign, uh, you know, you have at least two members that are willing to sign uh, 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 your church establishment affidavit under the penalties of perjury. Okay, attesting to the fact that you are what you are all claiming to be as a church and organizing together as a ch as a church, uh, then absolutely uh, you can have uh, not only a church, but uh, that church can also have a title within that church that is a corporation soul to manage all of the all of that church's financial assets, and you want that. Because uh, you want that because not only does this bring that not only does this allow the church to be under a mandatory tax exemption so now the church is not underneath 501c3 it's not underneath the jurisdiction of gender laws now it's under the better law 508c1a it's as a mandatory exemption status in fact it even has a, a mandatory exemption status from even being required to file annual informational returns uh, to the IRS. So we're talking about a lot of authority. And, uh, you know, uh, a corporation soul is not required to have a polity body, a, a board of trustees. Uh, I think I got like a sandstorm hitting behind me. But anyway, it doesn't have... Um, so it doesn't have a uh, it's it, it's not required to have a, a board of trustees. Uh, so as a, as a senior pastor and also an overseer to a church, you would not have to have a multiple people that you would have to go through a democratic committee just to find out how you should appropriate the funds for the church. Imagine that, uh, no bylaws. Uh, oh man, it's just it's full of all sorts of incredible, incredible things, and it brings religious freedom of speech back to the church. So uh, yes, uh, the answer is absolutely one hundred percent yes. But you have to follow our step by step guide and process that's in this book. I cannot stress to you how important this book is. Okay, if you, if you do not, if you deviate from the instructions of this book, you may potentially be in a lot of hot water. 
because the corporation's soul is looked uh, so unfavorably by the IRS because individuals uh, that were not churches, that didn't use it for its intended purpose, uh, misabused the corporation's soul as a tax shelter in a really bad way. And you want to make sure that when you set it up, you follow the instructions of the book uh, so that your church, your ministry, uh, and the corporation soul can be properly established and everything will be uh, 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 above reproach and done with integrity uh, and it would be righteous. So that's what we want here. So go to corporationsoulbook.com, get your copy or recommend it to a pastor friend of yours today. Thank you so much. God bless.